I've served on the bench now for 39 years. I'm 96 years old. The sense of contribution that comes with what I call doing justice is so satisfying and so complicated in many ways because of the complications of the law, the need to follow the law, the need to be predictable, the need to understand the nation and the policy directions and all the rest of it, that I doubt very much that I could find something equal or close for whatever remaining days I have. Judge, it's good to see you as always. Yeah, good to see so. you. Welcome. Judge Newman has lived a most extraordinary life. She has been a chemist, a lawyer, a bartender in Paris, an advisor to the United Nations, a race car driver, a pilot. She has patents herself. She's an inventor and eventually someone who created the very court on which you have sat on for almost 40 years. I think it was your first opinion that you wrote as a judge there. I've clerked for Judge Newman from 2008 to 2009, and then also worked for her in an unofficial capacity in the second half of 2009. You tear everything apart. Just you left that semicolon. That was a good day. I know it sounds perhaps like too much to say, but Judge Newman, along with a small band of her Confederates, has really saved the American patent system back in the 80s and has stood guard to make sure it doesn't fall apart for the last 40 years. And unfortunately, some of Judge Newman's colleagues have decided that she's no longer competent to do her job. It was threatening. The verbal threats were concealed, but that I was to be made miserable and intimidated was not concealed because that was exactly what was happening. NCLA is interested in this case because Judge Pauline Newman, an active judge on the Federal Circuit Court of Appeals, was removed from hearing cases without an investigation and without any due process. The first time that uh, Judge Moore came to see me, she said, uh, you know, you don't have to quit, just take senior status. I thought that it was ridiculous and that I should not succumb or set a pattern of judicial colleagues being able to bully and intimidate and force out a colleague they don't like who writes dissents. So I refused. She is living the life for philosophical intellectual gain. And I think we as the country have been very fortunate that she shared that intellectual gain with us in developing the law, in writing her opinions, where she's often been in a minority on her own court, but are equally often vindicated by the Supreme Court. And I don't think we really know why the Federal Circuit is treating her the way that it's treating her, but it doesn't matter in one sense. The law is the law. If you want to remove a federal judge from judicial office, the Constitution provides a way to do that. The House has to impeach that judge, and the Senate has to remove that judge by a supermajority two-thirds vote of the Senate. The main goal of the district court lawsuit is to put Judge Newman back on the bench. Typically, and under the statute that governs this situation, someone is supposed to remain on the bench for the duration of the investigation. They have not done that here, which is a violation of the law. One of the key early allegations against Judge Newman was that sometime in the summer of 2021, she suffered, quote, a heart attack, was admitted to a hospital, had, quote, cardiac stents placed in, and then a few months after that, had a fainting episode. And that these events either showed or prompted deterioration in Judge Newman's overall physical and mental health. However, none of those things actually happened. I never had a heart attack, never fainted, wasn't hospitalized, as Judge Moore said. As she told, apparently, all of the judges on my court that I was disabled, not able to move around, and not able to think straight. There's something going on here with the factual portion of this investigation that's very troubling. They've switched from being concerned with her mental and physical 
abilities at the beginning of the investigation to now they're investigating whether or not she's cooperating with them or not. And guess who gets to decide whether she's cooperating or not? They do. I still can't believe it. I cannot understand why my colleagues have decided at this stage of my life to destroy me, to destroy my reputation, as to remove my opportunity to decide cases. We're defending the very principle of judicial independence, that no judge, no matter how old, no matter how prickly, no matter how divergent in views from the colleagues, should worry that they'll be removed and put through this sort of process. Judges who have worked with Judge Newman have come to her defense. Retired Chief Judge Paul Michel said, quote, the chief judge and the special committee are continuing to act as accuser, investigator, prosecutor, and judge. That would not be acceptable in any other circumstance, and I'm hard pressed to see how it can be acceptable here. And retired Chief Judge Randall Rader said, I called Judge Newman directly. Within five minutes, I could easily and confidently assess that Judge Newman was as mentally sharp and capable as she had been for more than 40 years that I have known her well. I have not detected the slightest slippage in her mental acuity. If the committee gets its way here, it will be a tremendous loss for not just Judge Newman, who will be denied her judicial office, but for the country as well. These are lifetime appointments, as we saw when Justice Scalia died in office, as we saw when Justice Ginsburg died in office. If Judge Newman wants to die with her boots on, more power to her. I feel an obligation not to walk away from this and to leave it standing. Now, if it's there, and if it's allowed, the next time it comes up, the next judge uh, who may be disliked by his or her colleagues is going to have to go through what I'm going through. I don't see how I can allow this action to stand without debate.